Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Well, hello, hello. <laughs> Every time I say hello, the dogs think someone's here. That's funny. Um, all right. So, I didn't think I was going to... I'm sorry, I'm a little late. I'm about five minutes late from getting started because uh, old YouTube did not want me to connect. Uh, so... Uh, I thought it was going to be a minute, uh, but <laughs> oh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, we're going to do just a very simple little project. We're going to make some decorative rings and stuff. We're going to talk about uh, little knick-knacky stuff, uh, jewelry and, and things like that and show you, uh, you know, a neat little process of making some rings or, you know, whatever you want. Uh, earrings charms whatever you know but we're gonna we're gonna focus mainly on uh, making uh, decorative rings and a lot of this is gonna be um, on the outside you know away from uh, the uh, CNC you're gonna be at your workbench and you're gonna be gluing up you know uh, some panels and things like that not panels or boards and stuff uh yeah i know i gotta i got my uh, don't don't you worry about that we'll give a little screen and shout out to old dr pepper here but um yeah i thought we were gonna have uh some technical difficulties um and uh uh i had to restart the computer and it was like counting down the clock all right uh let me make sure that we are set up on the other screen Stand by while I open up the other screen. <laughs> ah, it's been one of them uh, days where things are running a little slow on this computer. Stand by one moment. So, uh, already starting the drinking game early for you guys with the standbys. Um, so, while we're uh, while we're waiting to uh, get started on the. Uh, program uh, in the Vetric software, I want to make a couple of quick announcements. Now, it's not live right now, uh, but it will be by Saturday. Uh, the new SpindleTV.com website will be live uh, by Saturday. We're going to we're gonna kind of launch it uh, Friday evening if all goes well. And on that website, we're going to have uh, digital downloads. Uh, we're going to have uh, video contents uh, similar to uh, same video contents and things that are on uh, the YouTube channel, the Spindle TV YouTube channel and things. But we're going to have uh, you know a lot of files and models and things. We're going to kind of I've got some digital downloads around on the web in different places, but we're going to consolidate them to the SpindleTV.com website. And as far as digital downloads, I'm talking, you know, we're going to have some design downloads, uh, some model downloads and things. And the, there is going to be a store. There will be a price. You know, the, the, it's going to range from $2, uh, you know, and uh, but generally a lot of the simple designs and stuff and things like that. Things that you guys pretty much could make yourself, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, they're going to be ready to go. Uh, Vetric files or DXF files, you know, we've got a lot of different uh, DXF files and things, but um, uh, like a cluster of different DXFs, uh, you know, uh, profiles, whatever. And um, they're going to be available for digital download. And the uh, Saturday, as of Saturday, these uh, things are going to be available. And so, uh, you know, uh, when you when you do the digital downloads, whether it's a DXF file or if it's a Vetric file where you get the whole file with the tool pass and everything, 
uh, as I always say, you know, never take a toolpath for granted. Always, uh, you know, if you get the program, always uh, look at the design and recalculate the toolpath for your tools and your settings and things because uh, you might be running your settings uh, different than I am when I create them. You know, but uh, we're gonna have some files and things for the digital downloads and stuff. Uh, I do have a new computer, a new laptop. Uh, my old one crashed, uh, but I'm on my uh, office computer uh, where I'm doing where I do my instructing and training and stuff. So, uh, but um, thank you for asking, William. Now the yeah right uh, the Dr Pepper hide the keyboards. Uh, I just caught on to that for a minute there. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, and, and on that website, uh, you know, just like with you know Digital Woodcarver, uh, you're going to be able to access the Spindle TV digital downloads through digitalwoodcarver.com, uh, as well as the YouTube channel through digitalwoodcarver.com. Uh, but you can also go direct to spindletv.com, and uh, you know for those digital downloads. And I'm going to try to you know get some, uh, you know, I'm going to be working on some different designs and uh, models and all things that are kind of uh, you know cool you know that are worth uh, spending two bucks on or whatever you know whatever the price is you know make see if it's worth it um, it's a way of uh, generating uh, to be honest with you it's a way of generating income in here uh, so that um, I can afford to pay my receptionist employees and, and things that I have now uh, as we're growing and um, hopefully I'll support that uh, and all um, and uh, that it, it, you know, it also it's a way to kind of keep these uh, training video contents uh, free. If you recall, every once in a while, the um, every once in a while we used to have uh, paid classes. You know, the paid classes uh, when we had WebEx and stuff, and that was a way to uh, you know again kind of uh, reimburse a little bit of uh, time and expense and things. Well, we don't have those anymore since we moved over to the. Uh, you know, out of WebEx and and in the in the YouTube live stream, so we gotta we gotta generate income some way uh, in things. So the digital downloads, hopefully, uh, you know, they'll go work. Um, does that open it up for non-digital woodcarver users? Well, William, YouTube is uh, live and public, so uh, it's open to non-digital woodcarver users. Um, and uh, uh, SpindleTV.com is open to the public just like DigitalWoodCarver.com is open to the public but the Facebook group is not open to the public our Digital Woodcarver owners group is not open to the public that is a private group just for Digital Woodcarver owners only but really anyone uh, you know can anyone can log into SpindleTV.com you know and so uh, we will um, launch that hopefully uh, Friday evening if I uh, uh, if everything goes well and uh, we'll go from there and see what we do maybe uh, add some blog and little newsletters little downloads little projects step by steps uh, see where we can kind of uh, take it all right so now we are talking about decorative ring decorative rings tonight uh, let's go ahead and um, one more time because it was just open and I closed it let me get my V card pro open and uh, we're gonna start from scratch. Uh, none of this has been pre-prepared, so let's move over to our Vetric software and get started. All right. So now in the Vetric software, we're gonna create a new file uh, and this, this file is um, going to be, now here's the thing, you can do a double sided job or a single sided job on this. Now if we were doing a double sided job, it kind of opens the door to uh, doing using some decorative profile bits uh, to create uh, different designs besides a basic kind of, uh, think of a like a basic male wedding band type thing where it's just a, you know, a round ring. Uh, we could use round over bits or OG bits or, or something and we could uh, carve from both sides and make a decorative profile. Uh, and uh, so we'll explore that a little bit tonight. Um, but right now let's start off with a 
do I want to I'm, see I'm kind of stumped now do I want to set it up as a double-sided job because it could be kind of either or let's set it up as a double-sided job just in case we want to get creative and we're gonna do just a very simple uh, square you know uh, we're gonna go uh, small with this let's say that we have a, a couple of one byte boards or something like that so let's go uh, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter and now the thickness this is gonna be dependent on how thick you want your band or your ring to be because we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about we're gonna jump into sketch up here and we're gonna make some uh, kind of draw it out in 3d so you can kind of get the gist but I would say uh, you know a typical wedding band I don't know three quarter inches uh, wouldn't be bad so uh, let's go with that and we're going to um, for the Z touch off we're going to touch off on the material surface on both sides and we're gonna flip it uh, along the x-axis is fine so let's set this up now while we have um, uh, yes, Wayne. Uh, sorry about that. The frame files are going to be available uh, this evening. Uh, got a little tied up this week, and I'll get those files over to you this evening. I got the hiccups now. Uh, we'll get over to you this evening after the uh, class. I will get them wrapped up and sent over. Got a little delayed on that one. Um, all right, so let's real quick, let's open up. my SketchUp program here and let's see if we can jump into SketchUp for a quick second. <clears throat> see if I can kind of illustrate this uh, in SketchUp a little quicker. Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe soon. Maybe not. Maybe soon. Uh, so let's say that we have our uh, square 7.25 by 7.25 and let's zoom into that let's go into our push pull now i'm gonna pull this up uh and i'm gonna have a if i'm working with a three quarter inch board i'm going to pull this up to dum dum dum, -dum. let's see here three eighths and three eighths is three quarters i want a a quarter inch sheet in there so let's go with a I don't want a quarter inch sheet. Uh, I want to go point three one two five three uh, one two five. Oops, get a little decimal in there. Sorry about that. Point three one two five. And go in here and let's make that a component. G for component. And let's give it some color. So let's say that this was a piece of walnut or something like that. I don't have any walnut wood grain, so let's give it, uh, we'll just kind of give it a color. Uh, let's go a little bit less uh, red, more brown. And let's go ahead and create a, another rectangle. And let's push pull that up. Oh, if I go, oh Lord, I got to do my math, got to do my math. Um, let's undo that push pull just for a minute. Uh, let me get my math going on here. <laughs> Point three one two five times two equals 0.625. And so that would be an eighth of an inch. Uh, right plus point one two five is yeah Lord of mercy lane I know I, I knew I knew math I just uh, uh, took me a second all right let's push this up to point one two five um, and then let's triple click that into a component and let's give this a color of uh, I don't know mapleish. What, what would what would maple-ish look like? Let's go kind of like that. And then one more final 
one more final piece of the puzzle push pull to pull that up to point three one two five and then finally triple click on that and create a component and we're going to give this that same brown color that we had before uh, let's pull that let's see here what I've got in my materials here oops not my materials my in model there we go and let's give it that color oops not that color you goofball that color all right so let's say at our workbench we go ahead and we pull up and glue up you know a nice little you know band uh you know nice little glue up of you know you can get kind of creative with this we're going to talk about getting creative using the molding tool path to create different designs and profiles and things um well if i you know uh come in here and i start cutting out some rings and let's uh i've got a chart of uh rings sizes and what their inner diameter is and things so let's look at that let's go to the desktop and i want my ring chart bum, 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 bum. oh my goodness foot shape that's a dxf i want that uh let's see here notes for lee Avondale foot model I got all, there's all the ever I'm always looking for my models and there they are okay so that ring chart let's go into did I put it in documents like a goofball let's see here well I'll be doggone uh i literally had it and i literally dropped it in stand by hey, there's microsoft uh let's stand by one second and let me pull it back up so we want a uh, ring uh jewelry ring let's type in jewelry ring uh inner diameter chart you won't see me doing this i'm doing this on the other screen uh we can go into images and I believe it was this one. Yeah, it was that one. Save image as ring 111 in my desktop. Ring 111. Remember that name. <laughs> All right. Now we can go into my desktop files over here on our main screen. We can go into the desktop. And ring 111 let's open that up all right so I've got a simple uh, JPEG image uh, that I just pulled offline of a ring chart it shows um, oops it shows let's see if we can kind of uh, zoom this out a little bit no or in there we go all right, so we've got the uh, United States, uh, Canada, Mexico ring sizes. You know, we have different ones for different places and all, but you know, typical ring size and their inner diameter or their inner circumference, you know, whichever way you want to go, however fancy you want to be. Now, I am a ring size of 10. Uh, so for my inner diameter, it's going to be 0 0.778. And so let's go back to our sketch up here. And I'm going to draw a circle. We'll just grab a place anywhere. And let's go 0.778. All right, wonderful. And let's take a, another uh, circle snap to the center of that one. And let's say that I want the thickness of my ring to be, mm, I don't know. What do you think? We'll offset it about what a quarter inch thick. Is quarter inch too thick for a ring? Uh, we can, we can. It doesn't look too bad. And now I'm going to take my um, um, bum bum bum. 
Well, I'm a goofball. Let's undo those two things. First thing I need to do is on my three components, I need to um, open them up. Or actually, oh gosh, Lenny, you can do this. You know how to do this. Let's select my three components and G and make that one component. Um, actually, stand by, ladies and gentlemen. I'll get this hang of this here in just a moment. We're going to explode these. This one. Explode that one. And explode that one. That's what I meant to do. And then I'm going to if my window allows me to it's going to take a second sketchup is really slow when trying to draw a selection window around something there we go all right now i'm going to g and turn that into a component okay one more time ladies and gentlemen we're going to draw a circle of point seven seven eight um, and what's oh, a big one? Is that point seven seven eight? Yeah, that's point seven seven eight. Uh, and then f from there, from there, let's snap to the uh, center of that circle. And let's go, I don't know. That's good. All right, let's go into our push-pull tool. And I should be able to push that down. Oh, Laney, you can do this. Control-Z. And let's take let's see if I can do it can I do it can he do it ladies and gentlemen uh, let's get rid of this that that and that did it do it <gasps> You son of a gun. <laughs> Don't do it to me. All right, so let's... Um, here, we'll do it this way. Push, pull, point, three, one, two, five. And then... Component. Let's move that off. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> there we go. Lord have mercy. It's acting up on me tonight. It's one of those things. All right, let's take that there. And uh, let's kind of, let's focus on that ring. You'll get it here in a minute. You, you already get it. You, you got it. But um, we're, we're bear, indulge me for another quick second here. Um, and let's see if I can do this. Let's grab another circle. Oh, come on, Lenny. You know how to do this all day long, son. Y'all are laughing at me. I can't, I'm not even looking over inside the, uh, inside the chat right now, so bear with me. Camera. Top view. Is 
Is it going to let me snap to the center? Are you going to let me snap? Freaking snapping tools. All right, let's push pull that up. Oh, that's a thick ring. Hold on a second. Okay. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Keep telling yourself that, Laney. Shit. <laughs> Slot of a gun. Yeah, you ever have one of those moments where you're like, you're trying to be slick and uh, you, you just aren't? Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm just surprised it's not letting me snap. All right, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. We're getting somewhere. Um, let's push, pull this down a little bit and triple click on that. Make that a component. We're getting somewhere now. Camera view, standard, top view. One more layer. I don't know why my snapping tool is not working. That's all right, we'll eyeball it. That was off, wasn't it? Oh, so close yet so far. All right. That's all right. We got it. Let's push that up. And turn this around. P for push-pull. Let's pull that down. Slick or not. And that's going to be 0 0.3125. Oops. No, it's not all right let's give this some color okay let's spin this around and ignore that so <laughs> all of that half hour just to make that oh my god how funny okay so imagine, okay, we glued up our boards, you know, we can make a decorative ring. The whole point of that was just to make this stupid little circle that's even crooked. But anyway, um, so we can make some, we can carve out some decorative rings. We can do some different bands and all. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to use the molding tool to create some different uh, waving effects or some different uh, kind of profile effects on this ring uh, and things. Uh, we're going to use the profile, the molding tool to add. To create some models and then we'll glue those uh those pieces up and create some different profiles but long story short we're gonna basically just kind of you gotta you know different contrasting pieces of wood you can go with double bands uh hell i could have went with a, a small piece of walnut a uh, thin piece uh you know veneer or what have you of um let's i'm a walnut and maple kind of guy then another piece of walnut then another thin veneer of maple and then my finished piece and it can create that double band you know all of that stuff right so you get it um gosh almighty whole hour uh by the way um this ring size chart uh, just a general google lookup google search for inside uh jewelry ring inside diameter chart so one of the JPEGs on there, basically it shows the different ring sizes from size four to size 12. And it shows your inner diameter for those rings uh, for our cutouts. That's what we're gonna draw our circles with. And also a circumference if you guys are working on the fourth axis uh, and you need to know the circumference because you might be creating some kind of cool little uh, ring style model for something on the fourth axis, especially if you have a sp 
fire to work with, right? So a uh, nice little ring chart. Uh, it's um, you know it's a cool chart. So thank you for whoever made that and letting me borrow it. Thank you. All right. So in our seven size by seven board, we're gonna stop for a second. Let me see how bad you guys ridiculed me in the chat section. Uh, let's see here. Both the component frame and the solid frame. Yes, William. Both the component frame and the solid frame. Thank you for not uh, ridiculing me too much uh, in the chat room, guys. Thank you for putting up with my uh, ridiculousness. All right, so we we've got our board here. Uh, you know, different ring sizes. You can you can come up. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to come up with different things that you could guys and girls could be selling at the craft shows besides your signs. And uh, you know, I've seen some really nice, really nice uh, wooden rings uh wooden watch face covers and things like that uh where you could take and and carve that two-sided watch face out you could take an old cheap uh, inexpensive watch and pop the uh face off and uh the components and put it in the wooden one and put a nice band on it you know, all kinds of things that you can do uh jewelry earrings necklace charms and stuff uh you can do some really nice necklace charms all those kind of things we're going to kind of focus on rings um, so in this case, uh, you know, I would create my 0.788 diameter, um, 778.778 diameter circle. And then I would offset it however thick I want the band to be. So I'd offset it outward. Let's say that I wanted the band to only be, uh, three sixteenths inches thick you know, offset at that point, 1875, and that would create my ring cutout. And we would have our board pre-glued uh, with different, uh, you know, different color strands, what have you. You can get really creative. Uh, I think it would be kind of unique if you did individual uh, strips as well. You know, you'd have some kind of, you know, checker pattern that you could do with your rings or what have you uh once you create if you're if you're doing uh you know a variety of sizes you can create the different sizes or if you have one particular size and you're going to be cutting them out of a small board or maybe a small quadrant uh you know we could probably get four or five rings out of this corner of the board four or five rings out of this corner of different sizes common sizes you know i think for ladies you you know common sizes would range from a six to seven and a quarter you know something like that for men uh you know seven to ten you know depending on the guy kid whatever um and then it's just a matter of uh you know creating a you know decorative not a decorative a uh profile cut um with our profile cut we would be cutting all the way through our material starting at zero a uh, quarter inch end mill would be uh, ideal for this. The only thing is with our quarter inch end mill, what we're going to do is we don't want the tool marks or the step marks and stuff. Uh, we're going to have to do some sanding, rounding over the edges and all. But I'd like to, since this is going to be a double sided project, I'd like to round over the edges um, before I get, you know, uh, maybe I'm going to flip this board over and I can use profile cuts and things like that. We're gonna create just a very simple straight profile cut here. Then we're gonna create another uh, profile cut with using um, uh, like an OG bit. Uh, see what kind of design we get with that. And then we're gonna do just a simple eighth inch round over. So let's start with a simple profile cut. I am gonna use a spiral ramp for this. Because I'm using a spiral ramp, I want my in mills uh i want to edit my in mill edit and i want to change the plunge rate to match the feed rate whenever you use a spiral in mill uh you want to match the feed rate and the plunge rate and so um i would definitely have a tab or two uh that because we're going to be sanding and cleaning this up and smoothing off all the edges on the rings inside and out so uh, adding a couple of small tabs uh will be uh, fine now the tabs I'm gonna go uh, you know quarter of an inch uh, that's the diameter of the bit that I'm using but you know the thickness you know eighth of an inch to sixteenth of an inch it doesn't need to be real uh, tall uh, to hold the parts in we're gonna click on edit tabs and we're just gonna throw a couple of tabs in here uh, and as far as the inside I'm 
not really worried about that little piece that's going to be left over uh, in here when that eighth inch, uh, that quarter inch end mill comes out. So I'm not going to throw any tabs in there. Uh, we're going to leave it be. Uh, but I am going to select both of these parts here and I'm going to calculate this toolpad. Now here's the intuitiveness of the software. Um, when I calculate, if we look at the 2D view and the 3D view on this, when I calculate the toolpath, the software knows that I have an outside cut and an inside cut. And even though in my profile toolpath that I chose to machine the vectors on the outside of the line, the software was intuitive enough to reverse that toolpath for the inner vector and cut on the inside of the line. So if we go into a solid view here, you can see it's going to be cutting on the outside of the line for the outside profile cut, and then on the inside of the line for the inside profile cut. And this little piece right here that's left over, I'm not really worried about it, so no tabs in here. Um, but uh, the intuitiveness of the software to be able to reverse that toolpath is phenomenal. So with that, uh, you know, we could then cut the part out uh, and we would have, you know, our nice looking ring, you know, uh, break off the tabs. Uh, this ring is going to be fragile, you know. Uh, and, and and things not too fragile. I mean, it's a three-quarter inch piece, but still, it's going to be fragile. So when you're cutting the tabs, uh, be gentle and um, use a sharp chisel if you're going to use a chisel. Uh, use a razor knife, uh, something, and cut away from the part. That way, you can sand it down to the part when you're sanding off the edges. Now, let's talk about. Let's take this here and <clears throat> let's control key drag a copy over and we'll pop a copy here uh, on this side and let's talk about our round overs and things like that so now on this i want to make a copy of this i want to select this and i want to right click because i did set this up as a um i did set this up as a two-sided job so i'm going to copy these two vectors over to the other side that way, when I flip this board, and might as well, while we're in here, let's go ahead and get our alignment pins in. So I'm going to draw a quarter inch diameter, because I use my quarter inch shelf pins. You can use dowels, shelf pins, what have you. Uh, and I'm going to drop one up here. Change that to a quarter and hit apply. And I'm going to take this guy right here and I'm going to make sure that he is centered um, up and down, which he is. Uh, this one I snapped to the center, but I'm going to make sure it's centered as well. But on this here, we're going to go into the mirror tool and very simply create a mirror copy and flip it about the job center and flip it horizontally. All right. All right. All right. Now, in my tool database, uh, I created my roundover bit for my Whiteside 2050 roundover. And it was a form tool. Uh, and now I just got to find it right there. That's my form tool for my Whiteside 2050. Now, this, you know, you thought it was just going to be, oh, God, he's going to be drawing circles and cutting them out. What's so impressive about that? But. We're going to be learning lessons about how to add form tools in this class. We're going to be doing all kinds of things. All right, so I've already got my roundover bit in here. Um, I don't have an OG bit. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't think I do. I've got. Oh, that that'd be a cool profile, right? Think about that. Uh, not really. Anyway, um, but how would you, if you don't have a roundover and you decided to go buy one? Uh, how would you get it and draw it and get it into your tool database? Well, we're going to talk about that right now. So first things first, let's open up a web browser and pop it over on the screen over here. And 
I the 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 my little eighth inch roundover is a white side roundover bit, and so if I come in here and type in right side 2050, um, and we pull that up and we go into images images, you can see uh, pictures of the uh, white side 2050 router bit. You know this is what it looks like here, and. It, uh, you know, the nice little drawing that someone's created of uh, the tip, the radius, uh, the height of the cutter, overall length, uh, the diameter of the shank. Really nice drawing. I mean, and typically you can find these type of profile drawings. You can find these type of profile drawings and things. Uh, when you're using form bits, you know, imagine if I was looking uh, for a bead bit profile and things like the uh, 1580 uh, and I needed to, you know, know the diameters. Now, of course, in the white side, it doesn't show the diameters here, but if I went to the actual white side page, then I, you know, it would, uh, it would show me the measurements and stuff and I can draw it out. So let's go back to that nice little diagram that some, oh, not that one. Uh, that nice little diagram that someone created here and we're going to use that as our reference so we have a radius of an eighth of an inch it's an eighth inch round over we have a height from the bottom of the bit to the top of the radius of one quarter of an inch we have a width on the lower edge here of an eighth of an inch and an overall diameter from left to right of three eighths of an inch. Um, and so the, and if you wanna know how I came up with that without, cause you don't see it on the screen, one eighth of an inch from the edge of the bit to the side here, that's an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch across the bottom and an eighth of an inch on this side is a total cutting diameter of three eighths of an inch. Now, <clears throat> Let's take those numbers and let's draw out this router bit in our Vetric. Now, I'm a big fan of using the square, the rectangle, draw rectangle tool for uh, creating profiles for router bits and things. And so for this uh, router bit, we're going to have a width of overall cutting diameter of 3 8 and we're going to have a height, a height of that one quarter of an inch. And we're gonna create that rectangle here. Now, when I created the rectangle, the one thing that I forgot to do was the eighth inch radius. So let's undo that and let's pop in our radius. And our radius is going to be um, a roundover, internal roundover, thank you very much, of an eighth of an inch. We're gonna create that and we're gonna get this shape right here. How nifty is that? Now, my overall height is a quarter of an inch from here to here, right? Well my overall height from this point down a quarter of an inch to the bottom of the color is what my router bit is. So bear with me a second while we do that. Now, when we draw a profile toolpath, we only need the right corner, the bottom right half, should I say the right half of the router bit. So we're gonna go into node editing and we're gonna cut the vector at this point. We're gonna cut it right in the middle here. And we're going to cut it over here. I could have just cut it at those two places, but I started on the left side. We're gonna cut the vector there. Now, what that does is that's gonna separate this top half. We can delete it, we don't need it. That's going to separate this left half. We can delete it, we don't need it. You like that little rhyme? All right, now, we need to go in and we're going to cut the vector right here. And if I were to measure, if I were to take a vertical measurement of what we've got so far, let's zoom back in here. 
If I was to take a vertical measurement from this point to this point, uh, let's make my numbers a little bit smaller. Point uh, uh, oh six. Let's try that again. Point zero six. Um, if I were to take an overall measurement, it's an eighth of an inch. Okay, and so we have from the top of this bit down to this line, we have a quarter of an inch cut, and so what we're going to do is we're going to delete that number and we go since we cut this line loose we're going to move it relative to its current position on the y-axis y is up and down and we're going to go negative 0.125 and hit apply move it down now I can take these two vectors and I can join them Join to us under edit object, second icon, last row. We're going to join them with a straight line. All right. Now, on the top part of this bit here coming up, if we look at that uh, web page profile again, on the top part of this bit coming up, we have a cutter. And that's part of this router bit, this right side of this profile. So we need to have that in there. Now, that cutter height is a sixteenth of an inch. Okay? That cutter height is a sixteenth of an inch. That measurement is not on here, um, but in other diagrams it would show that, but it is a sixteenth of an inch. So we're going to go into our Vetric and we're going to draw a line from this corner up. A sixteenth of an inch. Now, if you look next to that line that I'm drawing, you can see the L and the A. L says right now 0 0.055 and the A says 90, 90 degree angle. Well, I'm going to pull this up to 0.625 and I'm going to click and create that line, that point. And now I'm going to use my space bar to finish that off. Now, what's another way that we can draw that line? and use our menu over here. What, how, do, how do we use our you know, draw line box over here on the left? Well, let's undo that and let's find out. Now, if I were to click and start my line, well, drawing straight across is an angle of zero. Drawing straight up is an angle of 90. Over to the right is zero and down is 90. Um, but in the uh, uh, box over here it's going to be a negative or a positive type thing well for me now that I've snapped to that corner we come over to here and we're going to have a positive 90 because we're going up uh, in a length the L.0625 and we click add and it's going to create that um, it actually I clicked on created that one too um, now that we've created that we can use our space bar to finish and there you go, that line disappeared. Um, so we've got that 90 degree angle. Now, if I was, um, you know, it's just like, think of like drawing a box. So we're gonna use this menu over here to draw ourselves a box. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to tell the software where do we want that first point to be? Where do we wanna start? And I'm gonna start at negative one, I'm looking at my ruler here, and zero. zero on the y and negative zero on the x and negative one on the y. Thank you very much. So we're gonna go zero on the x, negative one, and we're gonna click add. That's gonna create that point right there, okay? Now I'm gonna come over here and I want a angle of zero and I want a length of one inch. We're gonna click add, that's gonna create that line. Let's zoom out so we can actually see it. Now I'm gonna type in an angle of 90 with a uh, length of one inch and click add again. All right, so that's gonna create that line. Now I'm gonna go negative, well zero is zero, uh, but I believe I have to go Is it zero? Let's see here. Add. Nope, we don't want to go that way. Um, undo for that one. Would it be a negative zero? Am I negative zero? 
Uh, nope. Okay, it's going to be 90. Daggum it. Negative 90. Oh, wait. Let's uh, first undo that last one. There we go. Negative 90, one inch. Oh, you son of a gun. Hold on a second. Undo that. Um, from here, from this point, 90, boom, 180. 180. Negative, 180. Add. There's my line. And then negative... 270. 270. And click add. Oh, did I go negative? I need to be a positive. Undo. 270. Add. To create that line, to finish that off. So that's how you would, you would create your start point. And then you would click add to snap to that start point. And then your angle is going to be 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 to get back to 0, you know, what have you. But in this case, I only had to draw to 270 to create that rectangle. So that's how you would use that tool. All right. Now let's undo all that. Boom, boom, boom. Get back to our router bit. Okay. So on this, we are going to create a line and I can use the menu or I can just use the numbers that I see on the screen there. So I wanna pull this up to a 0 0.625. Let's zoom in to, so we can see those numbers, 0 0.625 and spacebar to finish. All right, now we have three separate vectors that we've created and these are two actually because we did join these with that straight line so that's one vector there and one here we need to join those two together to make one solid single vector so let's go into the join tool we've got two vectors after joining we will have one click on the join button now we have our half of our router bit profile and that's what we need to insert it into the tool database you need to draw your router bit profiles to scale so in order to add it to the tool database, you must select it first, open up your tool database, and you're going to go new. In the type, it's going to be called a form tool. It will draw in the other half and put in the uh, measurements and all those kind of defaults, basic options and things. And uh, you can go with them or you can make adjustments. Well, I want to make an adjustment because I use my roundover bit to round over. And if we, uh, I want that total quarter of an inch, you know, depth of cut, that pass depth. So I'm going to go 0.25 for my pass depth. I want a step over, a step over from the side of the bit to the edge is an eighth of an inch. And that's what I want my step over to be. Oops. Uh, I'm actually going to type that over here, 0.125. And that's about a 33.3. It's a third of the bit, basically. Um, feed rate of 60, plunge of 15 is good. I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to call this my white side 2050 RO for round over form tool with an overall diameter, cutting diameter of 0.375. And click apply, and that will add it to your tool database. Okay, so you add router bits by drawing out not all router bits just our form our special form tools we have to draw out the router bit profile now if i was just adding an in mill or a v bit then i come over to new and i choose if it's an in mill v bit engraving bit what have you and i would choose in mill type in the diameter type in the pass depth how far you want it to step over when it's cutting the cutting feed rate and the plunge rate and hit ok Okay, I'm going to hit cancel on that one. Now, the reason why, and let me draw a rectangle here. And let's snap to here. And let's move this over and snap this corner to here. 
when I'm rounding over this rectangle, let's uh, put them on uh, different color layers, different layers. I'm gonna move this to a new layer. Uh, we'll call this round over and I want it to be red so you guys and girls can see it. Um, so when I'm rounding over, you know, a piece of wood, well, I want the bit to come down to the top part of that radius, and that's a quarter inch depth of cut. You know, I can step down eighth inch, eighth inch and do it in passes, but I'm gonna, I, I, when I do my profile cuts, I do a clearance cut with my uh, end mill for my uh, round over bit, but my round over bit has a cutter at the bottom, so it can cut too. Uh, but I typically have a relief cut around my material, which you'll see in a moment. Um, now, I want it to round that edge over, so I want a depth of cut of a quarter of an inch. My step over, I want this bit. If I were to just do a profile cut and cutting on the outside of the line on the right side, if I were to do a profile cut... Uh, on the outside of the line, well, that bit is going to be cutting on the very far right side of that bit. Well, that's not going to round over my rectangle. So I need to step over an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I, in my allowance offset, I would step over a negative 0.125 here in that profile cut. So that way, that bit is cutting here you know and cutting that edge off it's cutting along this edge of the bit with that step over that eighth of an inch step over because that is the distance from this point to this point is an eighth of an inch offset and so that's why we would type it in here all right all right so we've got that uh, you kind of hopefully you understand that and um, we uh, you know uh, Create that profile. Now, there is an OG bit in the tool database. There is an OG bit in the tool database. Uh, let's see if we went to our form tool section down here. Um, no, round over. That's a round over two. Here's the OG. There we go. Uh, there's an OG bit there. And I'll use it. So you guys will get the idea. You can use smaller ones and stuff. But let's look at our circle here. And let's uh, take a pause for the cause and uh, see what we got here. Uh, last week, okay, you guys aren't very chatty tonight. That's cool. Okay, Not cool. It's not cool, but, you know, make sure you're, so uh, can make sure you're still there. All right. Now, I want to round over the outer edge of this ring. And I'm going to be cutting this on both sides with my round over. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a relief cut, um, you know, on this side. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have a lot of them. I'm not going to have just one ring. I'm going to have, let's do, let's do multiples. Let's say that I pop this down, holding my control and my alternate key to keep it on its vertical plane. I'm going to pop one there, holding my control and alternate key. Uh, we'll make one there and control. Oops. My control and alternate key. The alternate key keeps me, no matter where I move my mouse, it keeps me on that axis. Keeps me in line. See how my mouse is over to the left, you know, and things like that. You know, it keeps me on that axis. So that's why I'm holding the alternate key. So there we go. We'd have four, you know, number 10 size rings there, sevens, what have you. Now for this, I'm going to do a <clears throat> profile cut, kind of a relief cut uh, on these. So I will have a profile tool path cutting a quarter of an inch deep and I'll go a little bit deeper, you know, 0.3 on this. And I'm gonna be cutting on the outside of the line and I'm going to da -dum -bum -bum, calculate that tool path right that's going to be my relief cut you know uh, on these parts so let's look at that that's my relief cut and now I'm going to have a profile tool path 
on these same parts here. This time I'm going to be using my round over bit. So let's select that tool. Bom, 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 bom. White side 2050 round over. It's going to have a depth of cut of a quarter of an inch. 0.25. Ah, one decimal, one decimal, 0.25. It's going to have a step over. I want to step over in the negative direction an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to calculate this and we'll just call this round over and hit calculate. If we preview that cut, that's going to be my round over. All right, hopefully you all can see that. Nice, nice, nice. All right, now we're gonna have our final profile cut and it's gonna be on all of the vectors. Uh, well, first let's do the other side, then we'll do the final profile cut on the other side. So we're gonna flip this to the other side and let's, let's copy all of our vectors uh, to the other side, all except for this one because I've already done that one. So let's grab this guy here and these two and let's make a copy of them to the other side. Now let's flip over to the other side and we're going to do our same cut over here, the same thing we just did. On the second side, we're gonna have a relief cut. You don't have to do a relief cut, but I like to do, you know, for my uh, round over bit. So a profile cut, cutting a 0.3 depth with my quarter inch bit. On the outside of the line, this I'll just name it relief. 0.25 end mill and calculate. We'll preview that toolpath so you can see that relief cut. Okay, now we're gonna have our second toolpath which is the round over portion of the, uh, it's gonna be a profile cut, cutting 0.25 deep. Yeah, <laughs> I got that decimal going on there. Uh, we're gonna select our round over bit again for this side. And we're cutting with an offset of a negative 0.125. And this is gonna be the round over. Calculate that. We can preview that toolpath. And then our final profile cut is going to be on all of the vectors, cutting everything out. So we're going to uh, profile cut this three quarters of an inch thick. We're going to use our quarter inch end mill. We're going to be on the outside of the cut, remembering it'll automatically reverse the inside of that cut. We're going to go on the outside of the cut. We're going to add some tabs. Look at there, because I made a copy. I had tabs on that, uh, and when I made copies of it, it already added the tabs in there. Wonderful. And we're going to do a ramp. Cut. The ramp cut's going to help eliminate some of the tool marks and stuff. So we're going to do a ramp, making sure that our quarter inch end mill has the same feed rate and plunge rate. Think of a toilet flushing as it's going around, it's going down. You know, we want it going down at the same speed that it's going around. Um, and uh, it's going to drop slowly, very small increments, you know, in the passes, but it's going to drop at the same rate where it doesn't have to pause. And this is going to be our final cutout and calculate. Now we can preview that toolpath. All right, and then we would have our nice rounded over rings. Now, think about this. What happened, right? What happened? Well, where my tabs were gonna go, where my tabs were gonna go, 
I had already relief cut that to a depth of 0.3, so I did not have any place to put my tabs on the bottom of that cut, right? Uh, so that uh, for uh, me could, you know, be a no-no. Um, and, you know, then we would sand the smooth and stuff. So let's take uh, look back and let's revisit that. Let's revisit that. We need the tabs to be in the middle of the cut, not at the bottom, you know. And if I create a profile cut, um, the tabs that I create in here are going to be starting from the bottom up of the cut right so then what that tells me is is I need to consider um, cutting a profile cut halfway through the material on both sides of the board you know so let's go ahead and we will make our relief cut our profile cut okay we'll make our relief cut our profile cut and so let's do that um -bum -bum. let's do that all right let's uh close this up and let's go back over to that front side and on this toolpath Let's open up on this one here, our round over. Uh, this is our, I didn't read, I didn't name this one. This was our profile cut here. Uh, for the relief, we'll call this our relief. And uh, for the relief, I'm not gonna cut to 0.3. I'm gonna cut just the depth of uh, 0.25, the depth of my round over. Uh, you know uh, depth of cut uh, I don't need to go all the way to 0.3 and um, I'm going to calculate that relief and then on the final profile cut which should be at the bottom of the list the final profile cut is going to be 0.375 okay 0.375 and my tabs and everything are still going to apply. Uh, we're cutting on the outside of the line and we're going to calculate that. And so, oops, I had this ring over here. Let's get that out of the profile toolpath because we're focusing on the four rings here. Let's get rid of that one. And let's calculate that toolpath one more time. Oop, son of a gun. Let's select all of our vectors. <clears throat> all right, so if we preview all of these cuts, we're gonna have a relief cut of a quarter of an inch. Um, I should animate this. Uh, let's, let's reset this and let's animate it so you guys and girls can see. Um, we're going to have a relief cut of a quarter of an inch on the four parts. Oh, come on. You know better than that, Laney. Let's try that one more time. I didn't have all three of them checked. All right, preview those visible tool paths. All right. <laughs> We've got our relief cut. Then our round over after the relief cut is going to be done. And we're going to be cutting out as many rings as we can out of this one piece. Uh, we'll have our round over come and do the round over cut on our parts. And then our final profile cut is going to cut down to 3 eighths of an inch. And let's take a look at that. Let this final two get done. Okay, let's take a look at that straight on here. Turn that around. 
you can see at the bottom of that 3 eighths of an inch cut, we have half the tabs. Now, knowing that it's going to be half the tabs, we don't need a quarter inch tab. And remember, my tab was set to 0.1, an eighth of an inch. Uh, you know, we could set it lower because it's cutting half of it here to that thickness. And then over on the other side, it's going to do the same thing. So that's going to leave me with a 0.2 tab. Uh, and I really only want to be at 0.1 overall uh, for the part. So let's go with a point, uh, oh 0.05. Calculate that toolpath one more time. And we will preview that last toolpath. We don't need to animate that. Let's cut those tabs down a little bit. There we go. So a little thinner tabs. Now, as we flip over to the other side, on our, we've still got our relief cut, but again, we're gonna change that to a quarter of an inch depth and recalculate that. We're going to have our round over to the same full depth, but our final cutout is only going to need to cut to 0.375. And we are going to uh, have our tabs in there. We're going to tabs going to be a 0.05 thick tab and uh, quarter inch wide. Same thing uh, outside of the cut. Calculate. All right. And now if we preview that cut, we will have our relief cut to a quarter of an inch. It's gonna do two passes. I've got my quarter inch bit setting at taking an eighth of an inch pass at a time. So it's gonna do it in two passes. The round over bit is gonna be a single pass coming around and taking that round over cut in a single pass. Then our profile cut is going to come down uh, and cut out those parts, leaving that small tab. And overall, okay, and overall, that will have my rings in here with the tabs, the that point one, my overall that I wanted, my point one tab, uh, that's going to have that, you know, cut. Uh, get rid of those center pieces. They're, you know, insignificant. And, uh, you know, we would break off those tabs and pull those rings out. And, of course, you know, we'd have our different uh, color stripe bands. You could have a solid, you know, rings. You can do what have you. Now, let's see if we can get creative and create some really unique profiles. Um, but before we do, let's stop and see what we got. We got some questions coming in here. Um, the tabs, uh, where are they going to be? They're going to be in the middle of the cut right now because we're cutting from both sides of the board. Uh, we're cutting that profile cut to a depth of half this three quarter inch thick material, 0 0.375, 3 eighths. And so at the bottom of that 3 eighths cut, my tabs are a thickness of 0 0.05, so the bottom of that 3 8 inch cut, we're going to have a 0 0.05 tab. When we flip that board over at the bottom of the final profile cut on the other side of that 3 8 of an inch, we're gonna have another 0 0.05 tab right on top of the other one, creating that 0.1, that, that overall thickness. But it's gonna be at the bottom of the profile cut. And when I cut all the way through, the first time around, well, I had done the relief cut on the other side, you know, for the round over to a depth of 0.3. Well, there was nothing left, uh, you know, when I, there was nothing at the bottom of that material, you know, because it's, it's calculating from the bottom of that three quarter inch cut that I did. So in this case, I'm cutting from both sides uh, so I can have those tabs uh, come in and notice that the tabs are in the middle of the ring in the middle of the cut okay 
Wayne, hopefully that cleared that up. Uh, with the profile cuts in the round over, how would you leave tabs so they do not get trimmed off? David, uh, I think you asked that question before I demonstrated it. So hopefully that demonstrated it. Uh, let me know if, the, if you got it now, if that answered your question. Um, it would cut them out, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Uh, uh, on the other way, when I cut that three quarters of an inch thick that first time around, it cut the tabs away. They were gone. Um, so I had to go back and re-adjust the setting. I had to go back and readjust the setting and things. So, um, and I didn't think ahead. I, when, I, when I created that toolpath, forgetting uh, that the tabs cut from the bottom of the cut up, um, I, you know, I didn't think about that. That's like, you know, if you guys and girls, you know, when you're doing your profile cut, think about this. When you are doing a full profile cut, let's say you're cutting out and you want to cut through your material uh, and you set your depth of cut to 0.77, right? 20 thousandths of an inch through the material, right? You want to, you want to make sure you cut all the way through and into your wasteboard. Well, that, let's say that your tab was 0 0.0625. You maybe have a 16th of an inch tab, right? Well, we have cut through the bottom of the cut. You know, uh, we've cut through that 20, extra 20 thousandths of an inch on that 0.77. Well, we need to deduct, that's going to get deducted from that 16th of an inch tab and we're only going to have a 0.04 size tab, you know? So when you have a, you know, a, a a small tab, you know, leaving a little bit of a, you know, a tab there and you're cutting deep through your material and into your wasteboard and you're going, you know, 30 thousandths of an inch more or 20 thousandths of an inch more, just know that your tabs are going to be that much thinner. Uh, if you want a, if you want to cut 0.77, you know, deep, uh, you know, through your board and into your wasteboard and you want a 16th of an inch tab, you know, when it's all said and done, then your tab would not be, it would not be a 16th of an inch, it would be 0 0.0825. Instead of 0.625, would be 0 0.0825. Cause you have to account for that 20 thousandths of an inch that you're cutting through the board, right? So um, just keep that in mind as well when you're doing your tabs and things. Cause if you ever wondered, man, why did my tabs get cut away? You know, that's why because you're cutting deeper than your material thickness and the tabs start from the bottom of the cut up. Okay. Uh, no, Paul, uh, the center won't get caught and jammed up. That little piece, uh, that little center peg that was left, it's, uh, it's not going to, uh, um, it's not going to hang up. If anything, it'll get flipped out of there or something. Uh, you do not need to uh, have tabs and that piece is going to be so small and insignificant it's not even anything to, to uh, stress over. Now, if you are worried about that, uh, Paul, then instead of a profile cut, um, oops, instead of a, let's reset this preview, instead of a profile cut on both the inside and the outside, you know, for your final cutout, um, you could deselect those inner vectors and you could just create that profile cut on the outside uh, for that final profile cut. And, um, oh, let me get the tabs in there. Bear with me. And you would do, before your final profile cut, you would actually have a pocket cut on, let's turn off the visibility of the toolpath for a minute. You could do a pocket cut on the inside. You know, oops, hold your shift key when you're trying to select more than one vector there, Laney. You could do a pocket cut cutting all the way through your material or, you know, three eighths if you're gonna be doing both sides, we'll go three eighths. Um, and uh, we will pocket cut that out. And let's move that profile cut there. We just uh, adding another toolpath. Now, the relief cut, 
and the pocket cut can be saved and run as one toolpath. Not the final profile, that would be a different one. Uh, but the relief cut and the pocket cut can be run as one toolpath. Uh, that pocket cut would, um, you know, cut the pocket out. Now you have no center peg to worry about. Then we would run the round over. And then we would do the final cutout. On our parts on that side we would then flip the board over and we would run we would have that same uh, cuts here but we would let's change our profile cut because we don't need the inside done anymore it's already pocketed out all the way through so let's get rid of those and recalculate that toolpath and we could preview all the tool paths on this side. That, uh, bum, 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 bum. There we go. Now, oh, did I do three eighths an inch and three eighths an inch? So we do. If uh, I, I thought I cut the pocket all the way through, let's add that pocket cut in on the inside. On this side, I only cut three eighths of an inch on that other side. So let's create that pocket cut. Three eighths of an inch. Same thing. Calculate and. We can cut the other half of that. There we go. So you could do that as well. If you're worried about those little pegs uh, in things, um, you can just do a pocket cut on the inside instead of a profile cut and then mill it all away. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, would a pocket cut give a better finish on the inside? Uh, possibly, yep, could be. Uh, but it's gonna be about the same uh, type of cut. And uh, with the with the profile cut, we're doing the ramp, uh, you know, cut. So it's going to be a nice clean cut. The pocket cut, um, we're going to be. Let's see. That pocket cut would be starting from the inside out, doing a nice finish cut. So it's going to be about the same. You know, it's going to be about the same type of cut. You know. So now. All right, so hopefully that answered those questions. Now let's talk about our molding toolpath and what we can do to create some unique things. Now this is a little bit more steps involved. Um, let's uh, take these profiles. Let's get rid of them. We'll uh, take our three circles here and we'll put them on a layer. We're going to move them to our alignment pen layer. Cap locks is on. And we'll make them invisible for right now. Let me flip over to the other side here real quick and let me get rid of these vectors here. And now let's go back to our front side. Okay. Now on this one, we're going to do a molding toolpath to create a nice little form uh, shape on our board and with this uh, it's going to be a little bit trickier there's a little bit more steps involved okay uh, so let's say that I we're going to draw a I'm trying to figure out which would best way to draw my profile All right, we're gonna draw a profile. I'm gonna use a rectangle tool to create my profile. And on this uh, rectangle uh, that I just drew, the height is going to be uh, 0.375, 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, and we're going to uh, have a full cut of seven and a quarter. We're gonna click apply. 
And to create a profile, we do not need the bottom line. When we're creating a profile for the molding toolpath, we're going to that bottom line in node editing mode, which is the second icon on the edit objects first row or hitting the letter N on your keyboard, shortcut key N for node editing. We're going to delete that bottom line span, get rid of it. Now, whatever I create here, I need to be able to mirror uh, for the other side. And so I want to, it's, it's, you know, we'll think about how we're going to cut it and all, but let's go with, let's go with a smooth uh, curve and also let's turn this into a Bezier curve. And I want to insert a midpoint on this span, another point there. So that way I can curve this equilaterally. Is that the right term? Equilaterally. Uh, and go right there. And so we have a, just a very nice, simple profile. No magic to it, right? Now, in the molding toolpath, we need to have a boundary or a a a guy a drive rail uh, to sweep this profile along, and so I'm going to create a straight line profile. And I'm just going to draw a line from the top to the bottom or just snap to both edges on the top there and that's going to create my drive rail and if I open up the molding toolpath here in the molding toolpath I need to select the drive rails from the toolpath uh, followed by the profile now if I did just one line up here and then I selected the profile um, you're going to see that that profile is going to be swept along the entire length of my board. Okay, you can see these uh, lines here indicating the length of my material. So I'm going to, for this, it's a very simple gradual cut. I happen to have a large diameter end mill, a uh, ball nose end mill, should I say. And so I'm going to use that. But if you have an eighth of an inch ball nose, that's fine. Just going to be a little bit longer cut. If you got a quarter inch, great. If you have a half inch, awesome. Uh, and in this, with this very simple sweep, uh, I'm going to use my half inch ball nose. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. Now let's reset this back to a blank board and let's turn this uh, isometrically so you guys can see it. And I wanna preview this toolpath. Sorry, Paul, we probably did have some buffering. All right, so now, so we have this uh, very simple cut right here. Okay, this nice little curve. Now, if I drew my curve symmetrically, then I could simply run this toolpath twice on two separate pieces of material. Um, and I could reverse the boards and glue them together and they should fit nicely together. Or I could create a second tool path mirroring that profile to create the second cut for the board. But I believe, I believe, let's see here. 
Yeah, I believe that is symmetrical enough that I can just do one toolpath. But let's go ahead, in case it wasn't, let's create the second so you know how to do that. Now, for the second cut, we would just mirror the toolpath. Think about two pieces of bread, you know? And so I could duplicate, duplicate this sweat profile so I can right click and duplicate it. And in that duplicate, this green node right here, this green node, I could simply just right click on it and click reverse toolpath. Reverse the profile. And I could calculate that. And reset the preview. Preview that toolpath. All right, and then I could take those two parts and put them together. Now, here's the, where the nice part comes in. I'm going to literally do some, you know, uh, bent lamination. I'm going to take a small contrasting thin piece of material, maybe even multiple small uh, thin pieces of material, uh, different color woods and things, uh, veneers. You know, whatever the case may be, or a little bit thicker than veneer. If I have a bandsaw, I can resaw very thin strips. If I have a table saw, what have you. Uh, and I'm going to literally add glue to this piece, add glue to my thin piece, and glue that on. Uh, my next thin piece, my next thin piece, glue, glue, glue. And then the other part, the other thick piece I have, I'm going to add glue to that, and I'm going to clamp all that together and put some clamp pressure on it and I'm gonna create that nice piece with that wavy line in it um, and now I've got a really dagger profile when I cut out these parts these rings and things I'm gonna get that waved profile in those rings Am I going to get that wave profile on those rings? If I cut that out. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, so if I were to, you know, uh, this would be my first cut to create the, the mold. And if you're ever doing bent lamination, this is the same process. Uh, without having to have a spire, you can create your molds using a single line in the profile toolpath, the molding toolpath, should I say. But um, the... Uh, now I can put in some, you know, nice decorative thin strips, uh, thin material uh, with my other solid piece that I cut out that I mirrored and cut out. I can uh, glue those together, clamp them and glue them together. And then that whole solid block with my curved little uh, profile in there, my little nice little veneer in the middle, I can now bring that back over to the CNC. I can create my ring sizes and then I can do the same relief cuts if I want to round over I can I don't have to I can do that on the sander I can take that uh, to with my little oscillating sander or if I have an uh, um, uh, you know a random orbit sander or just sandpaper hand sand them there's nothing wrong with that um, but I can round them over uh, you know on the CNC do the uh, inside profile cut and if I wanted to do the pocket cut, if I was worried about the little um, the little um, piece flying out in the middle, then I could do a pocket cut. Then my final profile cut, the same thing we just did. But now we have a nice little decorative shape. You know, it whatever we do with our curve, you know, when we create that molding toolpath. We need to be able to make sure that when we mirror it or reverse it or what have you, that those two halves can fit together. We wouldn't want to be too dramatic because we're going to be most likely veneering or bending uh, pieces in here of a contrasting color if you're making decorative rings and things. 
so you want to make sure that you have nice, smooth, flowing curves. Um, and in this case, once again, uh, to create this profile, I simply came in and drew a rectangle. The rectangle had a height of 3 eighths of an inch. And the and in this height, the height of it is going to be dependent on how deep you want that curve to be in your three quarter inch board, you know, or how thick you want your band to be, your ring band, right? Uh, because when we cut this out, that three quarter, that's how thick our ring band is going to be, three quarters of an inch thick, plus however thick those veneers are, right? So we got to think about that, uh, you know, how thick we want this to be. And it all comes down to the thickness of our material. If I were doing this, I'm doing this out of a three quarter inch board. Um, but if I was doing this out of a half inch board or, or a quarter of an inch board, I got to think about that height. You know, it's going to vary. Right now I'm doing it out of a three quarter inch board because I want to cut half of it away the other half and with the thickness of my veneers uh, in the middle, whatever I come up with for that design, I'm gonna have a decent size ring band of a little over, a good good bit over, should I say, uh, three quarters of an inch. So I might wanna reduce my material thickness on the job. I might wanna reduce that down to a half inch. Uh, because when I cut away that quarter of an inch material, you know, that wave, and then I glue in my center pieces and glue the other quarter inch piece of material, you know, uh, then, you know, that's going to determine the thickness of my band, ring band. In this case, I'm working with three eighths of an inch. Now, very simply went into node editing remove the bottom line, the span, delete the span by putting the mouse, undo that, putting the mouse right on the line. A lot of people get in that center point. Get on the line off of that center point, if you're ever doing the rectangle. Um, right click and delete that span. Now this upper span here, uh, we're turning it into a Bezier curve. Now on this line, if I insert a midpoint, now these two anchors are tied together okay they're tied together and you know i can make i can go dramatic with my you know with my curves and all i uh, remember that i'm going to be doing bent lamination so they're uh you know don't want to be too dramatic with it but I, I can get kind of wavy i can get create all kinds of different designs and once i have that profile that that design then I am now taking a straight line and I'm drawing it along the edge of my material so line tool snap into this corner come over here and snap to that corner spacebar to finish and that's going to be considered my drive rail my drive rail and with that drive rail I can now go into the molding toolpath with that drive rail selected, hold down my shift key, select on my profile. That will turn on the um, that will turn on the uh, tool. And using my ball nose end mill, my ball nose end mill, I'm going to calculate that cut. And now I can preview that cut. There we go that would be one half and I literally because I created that symmetrical curve I could carve this uh, profile twice and create uh, just basically flip it 180 degrees and it you know uh, it makes that mirror uh, or if I was unsure if I was symmetrical then I could come over here and just duplicate right click and duplicate that toolpath and on that duplicate I can 
with it open up to edit, I can come in and I can reverse the direction of the cut and calculate the toolpath. And now it'll cut out that other half and then I can put those two halves together kind of thing. So either one. Uh, I try to stay symmetrical uh, with this. Now, if you, you know, if we, let's turn off that toolpath. So now if we take a, uh, if we take and think about this, oops, hold on a second, let's turn that tool, I keep clicking on that toolpath, there we go. Now if we think about this and we think about, well, what, what else, you know, what else could we do? Um, Let's say that I had, think about this being the kind of a side view of your ring, because when those parts get cut out, we're, this is what you're looking at, that edge, you know, that edge wood. Well, if I took this uh, material, and let's say it was a little bit thinner, I could have a small thin piece of straight material across the bottom being a, a totally different, let's say uh, that I had cherry and uh, what's a good contrasting wood to cherry? Uh, zebra wood or something like that or whatever the case may be. Let's say I have an, I want a solid wood, but though let's go cherry. And I had a nice thin piece of cherry, quarter inch thick, what have you, uh, you know, I've cut. I can glue that on the bottom of this here and that's going to create the outer rims of my ring, the outer rims of the ring. And so I would, let's say I had uh, all this glued up. I had my maple or whatever veneered in uh, this walnut, you know, and I had another piece of walnut above that sandwiched together, glued and clamped. And then on the two edges, the outside edges, I glued in a quarter inch piece of cherry on one edge and a quarter inch piece of cherry on the other. Well, when this ring cuts out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be banded on the outside edges with cherry. Then a nice thick strip of walnut with a little uh, bit of a curve. And then a center band, a center line of whatever my veneer is here in the middle. I mean, you can literally kind of start doing all kinds of decorative things to create all kinds of very cool styles uh, with rings and then you just cut out your designs. So I want a big from the group in the class. I want a yes or no for this question. Do you get it? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Or did I lose you? Yes or no? Everybody that's sitting in watching the class, type in yes or no in the chat, and then we can move forward. All right. If you have any questions, we are going to pause and stop here for questions. We're in a, uh, you know, a couple hours of an in. Um, we're gonna stop here and we're gonna open the floor for Q&A. Now, the question and answer does not need to be about the rings or what have you. It could be about uh, you know a particular tool or tool path. Let's try to stay on topic a little bit, but if you have a general question, uh, go ahead and ask it now. But William, I would like you to, in your question on the somewhat yes, because I, I want a confident yes from you, um, let me know uh, where where you're kind of confused about, um, and I will uh, help out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the web browser here, and I'm going to type in bent lamination in Google, and I'm going to click on images. All right. And bent lamination. So here's uh, old uh, Mark Spagnola, the wood whisperer. Love this guy. I'm going to borrow his picture for a second. But bent lamination, you have two forms in a sense, and that's going to be our two halves. You have a uh, you know contrasting material. Let's look at uh, 
woodworkingtalk.com, which is, I think, if it's also Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer. Um, you have two parts, and when everything is glued together, when the in this case, the, these bent laminations is being used as a form to shape uh, the material, you know, to shape the curves. We are using it to create our solid piece that we're cutting the rings out of. So let's see if we can see an example of a uh, bent lamination uh, side view of two pieces. Come on, guys and girls. Look at all the things you can do with bent lamination. Now think about this. You can use your CNC to create the forms for your bent lamination glue-ups, right? Totally off topic, but yes, you know. Um, think about that. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can go back up. And bent lamination uh, glue up. Let's see if we can fine tune our search here for a minute. Show me some contrasting woods there, boys and girls. Well, we can use this. The Wood Whisperer. Mark makes some beautiful furniture. If you ever get a chance, check out thewoodwhisperer.com. Uh, Mark Spagnolo. This is not a ring, but this will give you the idea. So, uh, in this case, uh, we you know we've got this nice contrasting band here, and then as he did the glue up, he then curved and bent the actual legs of this rocking chair using the bent lamination technique. We are using it to let's see if I can type in bent lamination ring wood ring let's let's get really wood ring <clears throat> all right so here's some samples oh ho, 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 ho. yeah 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 all right um so look at there bent lamination co-hook wonderful uh job there guys whoever did that one um on youtube i love youtubers uh they're wonderful people all right so now these folks are uh, cutting out uh, the centers of rings and they're putting in shell, uh, shell and things like that. Well, we can't side cut that way unless we had a fourth axis to cut our groove on our round stock, ladies and gentlemen, with a fourth axis. But we can absolutely create bent lamination type glue ups. Here's a great example. All right, this is a, an example of what I'm talking about here. Pretty looking ring. But now, if you really think about your cuts of your material uh, and, and stuff, you can achieve, you know, uh, things like that. You know, that type of uh, cut out and glue up and stuff. That would be awesome. Um, you know. Uh, that's a bandsaw type cut. Uh, they've cut the material with a bandsaw. They're not using their CNC uh, and uh, doing the glue up of the individual strips and things. But, you know, inlay, if you had a fourth axis, guys and girls, you could do inlay type things. But, um, you know, metal, aluminum, copper, brass. So, uh, again, you know, nice stuff. Now, uh but this is going to be, uh, you know, imagine this cut here, uh, but we create our nice little wave form. Oops, wrong picture. Uh, look at all these different contrasting materials and bands and all um, from veneers. All right. So we're creating some very cool stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, you can go from there. So that is bent lamination. Uh, remember, I'm new to CNC. Understanding the laminating and border pieces as I do uh, that for turnings on lathe. Okay, great. Uh, didn't quite follow how the ring would come out at the end. Um, William, absolutely. I, I totally know that you're new to the CNC. Uh, you know, we did your uh, training and all together when I dropped off to you. Well, think you know you, you've got it for the lathe and stuff uh, and all well basically we are taking our board and we're milling off a curve in here basically creating the 
form that would be used in a bent lamination technique, but we're actually, our board, our form is part of our project. And so we would have our veneers or our little thin piece of material, maple, what have you, in here, and then we would have a second board cut to this shape. And they would all be glued together. Now, typically with a normal bent lamination, you have a form that gets released and then uh, you know, you've got your bent lamination. Well, we're using our, I'm, you know, we're, we're laminating our two halves and our center band all together, gluing it up. And then when we cut out those parts out of that square block that we throw back up on our CNC, we're gonna have a square block that's going to look like, oops, not like that. It's going to look like this. Let's see if we can draw it up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's take this and go <clears throat> control, pull that down. Oh Lord, let control. We're gonna have a block on the CNC that uh, will have a nice little curved band in it. And we're gonna have it glued up. We're gonna throw it back on the CNC and then we're gonna cut out that ring and things. And so on our ring, we're gonna have that nice curved loop all the way around. You know, cause we're cutting out the all the way out. So we're getting that nice band in there, you know. So the, I don't know if that answered the question, but no. Uh, can you use the molding toolpath uh, to say uh, picture frame? Absolutely, that's what the molding toolpath is for to create picture frames, uh, David. So, <coughs> David, we would start out with the center area of the picture, you know, whatever size it may be. Let's say that this was a three by five uh, picture. And we would center that up on our board and then the frame, you know, whatever size your frame is going to be out here. Typically, it's, you know, a uh, normal size board. So if we had a three by five, let's say that our picture frame, our material was a five by seven. Five by seven. We have our picture frame here. Uh, click OK. Stand by. Let it think for a minute. All right. Um, so we would take our profile. Let's say that we were creating a profile. I'm going to create a rectangle. Now, what I want to do is I need to measure what the distance is from this edge to the center of my line and this edge to the center of my line. They should be identical. So let's get rid of that rectangle uh, so it doesn't confuse you. We're gonna open up the measure tool and we're gonna do a horizontal measurement from the edge of our board to the edge there and that's going to be one inch. And we'll do a vertical measurement from the edge of our board to the inside of that cut and that should also be one inch. So the rectangle we draw for our profile is going to be one inch wide by however tall you want your uh, molding to be and I'm gonna go a half inch tall and on this I'm going to come in and go into node editing and I'm gonna create and delete that span and I'm gonna take this right side and I'm gonna snap it down halfway and I'm gonna take this straight line and right click on it and turn it into a Bezier curve that way I can curve this up a little bit curve this down a little bit here I'm gonna take my circle tool and I'm gonna somewhere right about here, I'm gonna draw a little circle right there. And somewhere right about here, I'll draw a little bit bigger circle. 
and I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to cut a line right here down and over 90 degrees. Let's zoom in so I can get that 90 degrees. Bam. And space bar to finish. Now I'm going to take my scissor tool, my interactive trim tool under the edit object tools and I'm going to cut away that corner. I'm going to cut away those two lines and I'm going to cut away those two lines. So I got a nice little bead. Nice little cove and a nice little step down. That's going to be my picture frame molding profile. Now in the molding tool path, we would open that up. We need to tell the tool path two things. What path is our molding going to follow? Well, it's going to be this path right here. We need to also tell it what the profile is. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and select on my profile. You'll see those lines pop up all the way around here. Now, I want this to look like a mitered picture frame. So I want sharp corners. I'm gonna check off create sharp corners. And I'm gonna use a eighth inch end mill for this because of my cove and my bead. Eighth inch ball nose end mill, should I say. Let's go with my tapered eighth inch ball nose end mill. And I'm gonna calculate this tool path. Bear with me a second. A tool path was not created. Check that there was enough space to fit the entire profile across the rail without overlapping itself. All right, so we don't want it to overlap itself. And so let's get rid of these guys here. And I want to look at the shape uh, size here. So I've got one inch by, I want this to be 0.5, a half of an inch tall. There we go. And let's go ahead and do that one more time. We're going to select our drive rail and our profile. We're going to create sharp corners and we're going to calculate. Well, now don't you do that to me. Check that there's enough space to fit the entire profile across the rail without it overlapping itself. There is. There's a one inch space all the way around. Let's double check and measure that just to make sure I should be. If my frame is centered, I should be one inch. Aha. Uh, I think that's because I'm not on the line. Bear with me a second. Let me snap to here and snap to this corner. All right. It's one inch. Bum, 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 bum. What it's worrying about is that the um, profile is going to overlap itself all the way around. And it's not. So bear with me a second while I figure out uh, my settings and make sure that I don't have anything set incorrectly. I think it's worried about overlapping on the corners. So let's do this. So it won't overlap inappropriately. Let's close this tool and we're gonna just draw a rectangle. We're gonna snap to the corner, snap to the other corner here, and we're gonna offset it inward one inch. We're going to create sharp corners and offset. Now we're going to go into the molding toolpath and we're going to select that profile and that molding toolpath 
and we're going to create sharp corners and we're going to calculate this toolpath. Why are you not working for me? A toolpath was not created to check that there was none. Of it. There is enough space. You son of a gun. Um No, it's uh it's one inch. I just offset this one inch in. It's this new frame. Um All right, drive rail, profile, calculate. What are you doing, you son of a gun? All right, let's reduce this just to see. Uh, I don't wanna to go too much. I reduced it by a few thousandths of an inch and let's see if that has any effect. I believe I have a glitch because it should not overlap. So a toolpath was not created. Check that there is enough space to fit the entire profile across the rail contour without it overlapping itself. Well, if I have it at the right size of one inch across, then there is no overlap. So what is the issue there, George? Yeah, Paul, that's what I was thinking too. That's what I just tried to do. Um, but... It should have no effect. Let's do this. Let's do this without sharp corners. And let me see what this toolpath. Oh, it's not even going to let me do that. Come on now. <laughs> you son of a gun. Okay, here's what the problem was. Not even paying attention to my own thing. I had the very step over checked. Um, just a simple setting. That should be unchecked. Create sharp corners. Calculate. Ta-da. Ta-da. All right. Now, gosh almighty. Uh, I had the very step over checked. All right, so we're going to preview the selected toolpath. Da -da -da -da. Man, waste all that time for a little checkbox. All right. Now, and so we've got that frame profile. Now, on this profile, let me zoom into this so you guys can really see. I want the bead on the inside here. I want the bead on the inside not out here on the outer edge, which it looks okay, but I want the bead on the inside and I want it to come down to the outside edge. So if I open this up and go back into my 2D view, I can right click on the profile and reverse that direction and recalculate that toolpath. I'm gonna reset it back to a blank toolpath and then preview it one more time. I can reverse the profile and that's what we're doing. And so now we have on that frame from the top, I've got my nice little bead stepping down to my cove and then that little step down. Well, let's go ahead and cut out the inside pocket or profile cut. Let's do a profile cut to cut out the inside so we can see what this picture frame looks like. 
Uh, and no, I'm not going to do a pocket. That's crazy. Uh, we're going to do a profile cut, cutting all the way through the material. On the inside of the cut with a quarter inch end mill, I'm not going to do tabs because I want to delete it away so we can see the frame. And I am going to do a ramp. Making sure those are the same. Spiral ramp. Calculate that. And let's cut that away. And so that would be our, you know, the front side of our frame. But yeah, that's what you, uh, long story short, that was a long way around to answer um, uh, if the, uh, <laughs> David, that was a long way around to ask if uh, the molding toolpath could be used to make picture frames. That's what it's for. Um, now, the uh thank you all for jumping in with suggestions and recommendations uh all of them were valid uh you know and, and viable options but what it was was i had the very step over um selected and it was creating an overlap uh by varying the step over and it was not allowing the toolpath to be created so that was the resolve that was the issue to uncheck the vary the step over um and uh the no don't ever be sorry david that was uh that was a great question uh it was my screw up i i, I you know i had the very step over which i wasn't uh cautiously aware of uh but then it, it took a minute it only takes a minute to figure something out don't get too frustrated i like i like you know i get i get onto myself uh when i make a silly mistake but uh you go back and relook at it and uh it doesn't take long to figure out. Uh, the software is very user friendly and intuitive. Um, yeah, Bryn, I do talk to myself and um, I do. And yeah, uh, I get onto myself out loud. You think, now I talk to myself out loud. So I'm not talking out loud just cause I'm talking to you guys on a microphone here, but you know, <laughs> I do. Laney, come on. You know, all right. So, so what is the purpose of the very step over? Great question, William. And I am going to direct you to the Vetric videos uh, library under the help section. Visit uh, the video tutorial browser, and in the video section, you can go down and take a look at the new molding toolpath video. Uh, because I have not explored the very toolpath uh, option, but the molding toolpath, this demonstrates all of the options in the molding toolpath, uh, create moldings and how to create arch frames and everything. This is a fabulous step-by-step -step tutorial uh, on the Vetric uh, video library that demonstrates the molding toolpath fully, and it will answer that question. I would not be able to do it any justice because I do not know the answer for what the very step over is because I've never used it. So I'm going to direct you to that video on the Vetric tutorials. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, David, for that kind words. But um, I just do not. Uh, I don't. There, there's a. There's a. You know, a couple of things. Um, I do know what the skip flat regions is. You know, when you're doing profiles, and I have some flat areas. There's no sense in machining those flat areas uh, with the putting them as part of the model. Um, I can use my flat end mill and do a pocket cut or profile cut to get rid of any flat areas. In this particular profile, there are no flat areas. So I know what the skip flat regions does. I just do not know what this very step over does. Uh, in that video, we'll explain it much better than I could. You know, um, so, but yeah.
So we got from rings to pitch frames because there's really, you know, rings around, you know. Now, I do want to talk about what if we did some profile cutting of a ring. You know, what would that edge look like if we had some special form bits? Well, we know what the round over looks like, right? Uh, we've got what the round over looks like. And what would the what would it look like if we used an OG bit to cut out uh, and create the profile before our final cutout and things? Well, let's explore that a moment, shall we? Because um, uh, I don't even know myself. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a ring that is 0.778, which is my inner diameter. Um, oops, son of a gun. 0.778. All right. And I'm going to offset that outward. I want a band that is going to be... Uh, let's go three eighths of an inch thick. Offset. Oh, I went inward. Let's go outward, ladies and gentlemen. And let's do a profile cut. I'm just, you know, experimenting right now. Let's do a profile cut, cutting 3 8 of an inch, 0.375 deep, with our OG bit. Let's see what that sucker would look like. It's going to probably look weird. I think it would be typical roundover more so than an OG. You know, we would typically use a roundover type uh, profile bit, but let's use the OG. Let's see what it looks like. And let's create that toolpath. Reset our preview. Nah. Let me cut out the middle of the ring for a minute. Profile cut. I'm going to cut all the way through. Point seven five. The OG is a backwards bit. It shouldn't, uh, that would be the wrong profile. Um, it wouldn't look good. But let's cut the, let's cut the, um, let's cut the center out for a second so we can kind of analyze that. Ba, ba, ba. Calculate. Yeah, the OG bit would be um, it would be the wrong direction. It would not be the appropriate uh, direction for the ring. So we would not use an OG bit. We just determined that for a cutout. Um, what else do we got? We got uh, bead bits. Uh, trying to think of other cutters that would give us a unique profile and the OG wouldn't be one um, what other uh, let's see if I wanted to do a round over It would be my round over bit and I would just be taking it deeper. So because we have that straight edge, I mean, that's really, I mean, other than I had, I'd have to go look at different router bits out there on the market and see what they've got. But um, like a, they have a sideways cutting V bit uh, for doing thread cutting that could be used to make some really neat looking treads or tracks or something. But uh, if I were to use my round over bit, that round over bit, but I cut beyond, beyond the quarter of an inch. If I go point three one two five and calculate that toolpath, reset that preview, 
and preview that selected toolpath. Well, make sure, was I on the outside of the cut? I was. Um, let's preview that selected toolpath. Yeah. Um, let's go a little more than 0 0.3175. Let's go 3125. Let's go 0 0.375. 375. And calculate that. Preview it. There we go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's take these two and copy them to the other side. Let's switch over to that other side and let's do a profile cut to 375 with the round over calculate that. Wonderful. Uh, before we would run that second cut, we would do the uh, pocket cut that's um, going to cut all the way out the material. 0.75. Um, pocket or profile, either one. Oops. Let's select the vector. I'm just doing a pocket cut so the little thingy isn't floating in the middle. Doesn't matter. Uh, preview that toolpath. And so now we would have a ring. Let's get this to focus. Focus. Ooh, stand by a minute. I froze it up. I locked it up. Hold on a minute. <laughs> it's trying to regenerate that image and uh, there we go there we go let's pull that down and let's look at it from a x-axis view here so we would have that ring with our band right oh darn it I did it again Stand by a minute. There we go. We'd have that ring with that center wider band that we could take and we could we could sand it. Of course, you know, you're seeing the rough edges because I have my tool simulation, you know, set up very high. So you're kind of seeing the rough cut of the end grain and stuff. Um, but, you know, we would sand that down. You'd create a nice little band. It's uh, flat on one edges and thing. So that, you know, experiment with it, you know. Uh, a full round with a bead. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, you could do that for sure, William. And, and, and William, is that... Uh, wouldn't that be just uh, taking that and cutting a little deeper? Or we'd have to use a smaller or a larger diameter bit because we don't want to cut all the way too deep on one side then try to cut the other side and it cut loose. So uh, we'd probably have to use a bigger uh, round over, something like that. But anyhow, um, so yeah, my 2050 bit would do uh, me fine for creating that nice little beaded with a little bit... Uh, uh, you know, wide band. Uh, I probably wouldn't want my band that thick on my finger. Come on, be let's be realistic. So let's actually uh, let's actually increase that diameter of that circle. That's kind of a thick band that would drive the drive you nuts. Um, and let's create that pocket cut again. and cut that out there 
There you go. A little bit more appropriate and things. Um, so now, of course, I just increased my ring size, right? How stupid was that? I should have decreased the outside profile line. Oh, my gosh. Undo that. That's my ring. That's my inner diameter. Don't change that one. Let's actually bring that in like a goofball. It takes me a second to think about what I just did. Um, and uh, recalculate that. Takes me a second. Uh, reset that preview. Preview that toolpath. Yeah, right? Spare tire for a Model T. There you go. Uh, well, I mean, it's the same process uh, if you were creating model cars and you had to cut the tires out. Same thing. Um, so let's preview that inner cut. And let's flip this to the other side. Recalculate. Um, oops, forgot to do one very crucial thing. Let's move that. Or copy that, should I say, to the other side. And recalculate this final profile cut. So we can preview that. Um, napkin rings uh, with wood bracelets. Yep, napkin rings and wood bracelets. Rings, uh, shower curtain rings, uh, house curtain rings. Um, you know, decorative rings for your curtains and curtain rods. Uh, I mean, so many different things. It's not just rings for the finger, you know what I mean? Uh, should have put a ring on it. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, uh, just the great, you know, you're exactly right. I mean, think about that. Um, the uh you know anything uh round and uh, those are just some ex great examples the william what the napkin rings and the wooden bracelets um the shower curtain rings uh you know um let's see here i was thinking of not cutting out the middle and using it on top of a spindle for making a rail post for a banister or a deck rail there you go um, so if we were to um, cut out that outer profile without cutting away the center on both sides did I preview it preview it would help if I click on the preview button. All right, flip this over and do the same thing on that. Preview that. You know, you can make it thicker, of course. You know, I'm I'm three quarters of an inch thick, but you could go thicker. Uh, you know, to make a nice little uh, finial top. Um, you could, uh, yeah, a lot of things you could do. Uh, so that's a great one. Um, yep, you can model a cap for a banister pose. Um, you could have, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> like for me, I would, um, I would do something like this and on the inside I would cut some internal threads. Have you guys ever seen a side cutting thread cutter? Uh, it's uh, made by Magnate and um, fabulous little bit uh, by Magnate Tools. Uh, let's see here if I can just Google search Magnate Um, bum, bum, bum. Images. Let's see if uh, 
So the thread cutter is basically a sideways V-bit. All right, 90 degree, uh, three eighths inch diameter V-bit, but the V comes off the side, uh, creating a, you know, a thread kind of cut. And this is great for making, you know, like nuts and, and stuff. Uh, as far as the bolts, you'd have to have a fourth axis for the bolts. Uh, you could, well, no, you could do, it'd be short bolts. Uh, you know, you got a four inch or a five inch Z height on your four, on your table. You could do short nuts. But uh, anyway, that side thread cutter. Now for me, if I were using something like that, I would have, I could make decorative uh, caps for uh kitchen mason jars uh and things you know like you know for uh uh canisters uh kitchen glass canisters or something uh nice decorative wooden caps and lids uh to spice up the kitchen you know uh or um a lot a lot of different things you can do with it um the thread cutter uh is a nice little tool from Magnate. I own one and uh, I like it. They, they make it. Uh, that tool, by the way, if you guys and girls, it's magnate.net and it is the Magnate 796 thread cutting carbide tipped router bit. Okay. And. But anyway, um, yeah, right? Little lids, little thin lids. They wouldn't probably be three quarters of an inch thick. You know, they'd be thinner. Um, but you figure out uh, how the, the groove of the thread of a mason jar is, you know, what the angle and the drop of it is. And uh, you can cut a little thread that kind of will thread it around, you know, things like that. I mean, you can, you can really... You can, you just start thinking outside the box, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's about as far as we can go with cutting decorative rings out on the CNC. Um, if you do do this, uh, you know, and um, you don't have to have the roundover bit, but the roundover bit was the white side 2050. Uh, absolutely not necessary to have that because you can round it over with uh, you know sanding. You know, once the part is cut out, you can do all the nice little shaping and sanding and everything. Uh, the roundover bit just uh, makes it, uh, you know, uh, easy. Um, that bit is a plungeable cutter. You can reduce the depth of cut for the pass depth uh, on that uh, bit, you know, that I have in the settings for that bit. I have it set, um, oops, my roundover. I've got it set for a quarter inch. I can reduce the depth of cut and uh, that's maximizing the depth of cut. I can reduce the depth of cut or increase the number of passes uh, that I can do and I can take all of my passes uh, with that without having to do the relief cut if I didn't want to do a bit change and didn't want to do the relief cut. Um, my pocket cut uh, rather than a inside profile cut I could do an inside pocket cut so that little piece isn't you know moving around or dangling because I'm not going to use I'm not going to be sanding tabs on the inside of that ring absolutely not uh, so uh, you know you don't you know you can do a pocket cut instead of a profile cut for the inside cut um, and uh, you know all kinds of uh, different things that you can do and you know, uh, and that's it. Uh, so let's see here. What kind of speed and feed for this bit, Wayne? Uh, for the V bit or for the roundover? The roundover I'm running around 60 and 15. Uh, for the B V bit, I would probably because we're you know when you do the V bit cut. You're gonna do you're gonna do a clearance pass uh, with a straight end mill to cut out the center inner diameter, and then you're gonna run a V bit inside profile cut with that V bit uh, to create the threads. Now, you cannot 
Let me let me make sure you understand this, okay? Um, cutting threads, internal threads. I do not believe. I do bear with me a second. I do not believe we can create a thread toolpath with this. I think we would have to hand write the G code. And the G code is very simple. I can uh, I'll show that I'll create a sample G code for a thread cut. Um, I'll throw that in the Facebook group. But I do not believe that we can cut threads because it's got, if as it comes in, remember a thread is not just around, around, around. It's around and down. So, you know, the pitch of that thread is very important and all. And. I do not believe that we can create a thread cutting toolpath with the with the Vetric software. I think we'd actually have to write that one uh, by hand. I will explore that uh, a little bit more, um, but I will also create a sample G code of a uh, thread. Uh, you know, um, thread cut. You know, uh, maybe an eight threads, you know, uh, per inch or something. And uh, show you guys, uh, it basically kind of break it down. I can do a little uh, explanation and breakdown of the G code, uh, what each of the numbers and, and, and everything stand for and what part of the cut that's going to be, little diagram. But yeah, we wouldn't be able to do... I don't, I don't believe, I have not uh, researched that. I don't believe we can create a profile cut and create a thread cut with um, with Vetric. We'd have to do that manually. All right, so um, could you round over the center of the ring? I mean, yeah, we can do the round over on the inside cut as well uh, to, you know, if we... Um, Let's take a look at that. Uh, we'll do the round over um, quarter of an inch on the inside of the cut with a negative step over. Uh, actually, that'd be a positive step over. We're on the inside of the cut. <clears throat> and Then on the profile cut, I'm just doing regular round overs now, uh, with a step over of a negative 0.125, because we're on the outside of the cut. Calculate that. Ooh, look at there. Almost looks like a thread done in that ramp, that spiral ramp. But unfortunately, I don't believe that would be. Um, I don't think we can do threads with it. Okay, so we will um, preview that cut. And then we'll do our little... Uh, pocket cut oh ah that's right our pocket cuts gonna cut all that 
our round over should also be a negative, not a positive. So let's go back over to that round over. Uh, it should be a negative. I had it set for positive. Let's calculate that again and preview that cut one more time. There we go. So, Wayne, yes, you could round over both inside and outside of the ring. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. And it would be, a, uh, even though you're doing an inside cut, it would be a negative also uh, for the step over eighth of an inch if you're using now the eighth of an inch is only if you were using an eighth of an inch round over bit like the 2050 that round that step over would vary based on the diameter of the cutter you know the uh the round over the radius of the round over should i say um wayne i i would love to make the threads uh but i can't demonstrate it in here um Unfortunately. Well, I might be able to... Uh, let's see here. Bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. Let me see if I have... Stand by. Let me go into my Seagate. And then we're done for the day, guys. Uh, all right, let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. Let me see what this PDF is. Um, okay, that's calculating threads. All right, let's go into. Oh, that's my thread cutting program that I'm working on. Okay, that's not it. Let's go, bear with me a second. Let's go back. That gummit. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Documents. I know I've got a thread toolpath thread. Threaded knob. Let me look and see here. Alright, nothing in documents. Nothing in documents. Desktop. Do I have thread in desktop? I don't think I do. I'll find it and I'll post it. There's no I can't waste uh, time looking for it. Um Last place I'll look. Okay. So I will find it and I will uh, I'll paste the I'll paste the link. Um <laughs> Yeah, we're done. Um All right, ladies and gentlemen, now just think about uh, what what we talked about here. I want you to, uh, you know, definitely explore the molding toolpath. Remember, if you are going to create that uh, type of 
uh, profile or swept profile to create those waved forms and things. Um, make sure you use nice sweeps and, and all uh, because you will be bent lamination type glue ups. Uh, you know, you will be gluing up thin panels and veneers and things in between that. You want nice curves, no hard corners or anything like that. Um, I will uh, do my best to create a file. Uh, I'm going to carve a couple of samples out. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I can carve a couple of quick samples out of rings. And then I'll create a profile pro, uh, program file with uh, some nice setups and see what, uh, you know, and I'll share them with you guys. Um, yeah, Paul, um, I'm glad they, uh, you know, um, I had a great Easter. Thank you very much. Sorry that you missed the last two. Um, yes, thank you again for the class. Um, you're welcome. It's late. It's 10 o'clock at night. We got to get to, I'll get to bed and get some rest or get to work, whatever the case may be. want to thank you for spending all of these hours with me. Uh, who would have thought that we could have spent three hours talking about how to make a ring on a CNC or rings? But think about all the things that we discovered. You know, you've got uh, curtain rod rings, you've got napkin rings, you've got, you know, uh, tops of uh, uh, rail posts and things like that. All of these different things. And then, of course, you've got decorative jewelry style rings that you can create. Uh, think about that. Think about the, you know, different thoughts, uh, creating different uh, looks and all, and see what you come up with. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopefully this was an okay class and not too boring or too lame. We will get better and better. Uh, be sure to check out SpindleTV.com Saturday. It's not live now. You will, uh, If you tried to go to a website that said SpindleTV.com right this second, you would get an error because it's not live yet. Um, but, uh, check out that for some digital downloads of different designs and signs and, uh, models and things. And, uh, we're going to populate it the best we can Friday, <clears throat> excuse me, for Saturday release. And then we will, uh, as time goes on and stuff, we will put more and more unique and awesome, uh, designs and things. These designs, uh, if they're going to be, the most of them are going to be Vetric type designs. So you can alter and change them in your Vetric software. Uh, but sometimes there's going to be DXF files of different profiles and and uh, profile uh, you know clusters of different profiles and things uh, that'll be available. <clears throat> Think about uh, like raised panel uh, profiles for raised panel doors and things like that and blah blah blah. Um, so uh, definitely keep an eye out uh, for those things. And like I said, the downloads are not going to be very expensive. They're just a way to generate income to help support. Uh, the company here and the people the, to keep them employed and so I can keep these classes free. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you and have a good night and see ya until, <laughs> until next time. I'll see you soon.